Good morning, everyone. The psalmist wrote, I wait for the Lord with longing. I put my hope in his word. My soul waits for the Lord more eagerly than watchmen for the morning. This morning, I've chosen a number of carols rather than sticking to the hymns that fit the readings uh, so much um, because we're quickly heading towards Christmas and we haven't sung a single carol yet and you're still not going to sing a single carol. If you sing along, because you'll very likely know the words, John Sinke's going to come out and beat you around the head. <laughs> Just listen. In 301, this is sung... <laughs> behave. This is sung by King's College Choir. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. us pray. Loving Father, we do not come to you as those who have to prove their worth, justified by our own good wishes, our own good works, our works of greatness, or our faith. We come to you humble and small, sinful and weak, trusting in your mercy and daring to believe that you will accomplish great things in us by the power of your love. We come poor and insignificant, 
rising towards you in the resurrection glory of the one who was crucified, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, when you come to us, our confidence, confidence cannot stand. Our superstition, our lies, our self-deceit crumble to dust before you. Our self selfish exploitation of each other, our contempt of other people, our vanity and self-righteousness are sewn up in all their paltriness and squalor. But why should we want to stand up to you when your purpose for us is so much greater, so much greater than all our wishes, all our dreams? Come with your devastating judgment. Forgive us and lift us up to celebrate your restoring mercy and to stand in risen splendor with Jesus Christ our Lord. Living God, take our sense of inadequacy and insignificance and match it to the humility of Jesus so that we may be great with him in your kingdom and have confidence to serve and glorify you now and forever. Amen. And now we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. The next hymn we're going to listen to is The Race That Long in Darkness Pined. This, is, this hymn talks to us about the time that the Israelites were, were um, in Egypt under the rule of, the, of the, the, the Pharaoh. And it was a difficult time, and it was a very long and difficult time. And then when they were led out of the wilderness by Moses, they spoke about seeing the light, the light of God. It's rather been like us as we've gone through this COVID period. We've walked in darkness for a while then. But we can see the light now, the light of a vaccine. So let's listen to the race that long in darkness pined. chapter 35, reading verses 1 to 10. Joy of the redeemed. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Camel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our Lord. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf, deaf 
unstopped. Then with the same leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy, water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. And the highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. The unclean will, the unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about it on it. No lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there, and those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy, joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Second reading from James chapter 5 from verse 7 Be patient then brothers and sisters until the the Lord's coming See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near Don't grumble against one another brothers and sisters or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Gospel reading is from St. Matthew, chapter 11, from verse 2. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he said to his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive a sight. The lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not... What did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are kings, are in kings' palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than me. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, John. We're now going to ha- listen to um, In the Bleak Midwinter. It's sung very kindly. Um, Bruce Davis, whom you'll all know, has recorded this for us and and we're going to play his version of it.
In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Her stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long ago. Our God and cannot hold him, nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place suffice. The Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Angels and archangels may have gathered there. Cherubim and seraphim throng the air. But his mother only in her maiden place worshipped the beast. Loved with a mother's kiss. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a I would do my part, yet what I can I give him, give my heart, yes what I can I give him, give my heart. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The season of Advent is maybe the most confusing and yet the most inspiring of our church seasons. In it we anticipate both the coming of the Christ child at the first Christmas, and at the same time the second coming of Jesus at the end of the world. It is a season in which the readings focus on the paradox between the sometimes harsh reality of the earthly world and the hopeful dreams of the heavenly realm to come. In Isaiah, the image of the wilderness is transformed by God's hand. And it's described quite vividly. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. It may be hard for those of us in urban and modern perspective to fully appreciate how threatening the desert was to people in the time of Isaiah and John the Baptist. But the desert wilderness in the Middle East were real places of great danger and often death, always places to be avoided and feared. The idea of the wilderness is not restricted to physical places though. We can find ourselves in physical, emotional, financial, social or spiritual wildernesses. And those of us who have maybe been in one of those places 
know just how terrifying such a wilderness can be. Now maybe your world is that lush valley overflowing with the proverbial milk and honey. Maybe your life is so wonderful that you cannot relate to the metaphor of being in a wilderness. But as we really look at the world, we see people living in the wilderness. And when you or someone you know is in a wilderness, then you experience it intensely and profoundly. It attacks your spirit and challenges your faith. Dreams, that is what Advent is about. That is what being a Christian is about. The Isaiah and the Matthew passages today called the people of those times to dream, to dream of escaping from the wilderness. They challenge those people of, and us today to be messengers, to be prophets, to be dreamers, dreamers of a better world. The question is timeless and the universal is, how do we keep our faith? How do we keep our hope? How do we keep our dreams alive when we fall into a wilderness? My friends, we live in a world which worships success and power and wealth and beauty. We live in a world of expectations that are sometimes difficult and sometimes so unrealistic to be impossible to meet. As Christians, we must realize that many of these standards and expectations are not, considered with Je not consistent with Jesus' life and certainly not with his ministry. They do not promote love and justice or compassion, but rather lead us into the wilderness of greed and deception and selfishness. How do we keep our faith? How do we keep our hope and our dreams in the midst of a secular world that is a wilderness, a wilderness of greed and lust, injustice and hate? I expect and hope that you were just as disgusted and disappointed as I was to hear on the news this week that during this period of COVID-19, when many people were really frightened and vulnerable, that the police in the United Kingdom recorded being involved in investigating a record number of crimes of fraud and scams against frontline line workers and the elderly. The only answer is simple. Prayer, study and worship and service, community service. In a parish church, at its, as a, if a parish church is at its best, if it is faithful to Christ's call, it will provide an environment to bring its members out of the wilderness. It will provide fellowship with other pilgrims and other dreamers. It will nourish members by the sacrament of Holy Communion and the preaching of the Word. Bible study help members to know Jesus more deeply so that they can follow him more intentionally. Opportunities for service to the community provided so that members can be the hands and the feet and the lips of Jesus Christ, no longer with us. This is why regular attendance at worship and participation in the programs of the church are just so important. This is how Christ's people are fed. This is how we are strengthened for the journey through whichever wilderness we happen to encounter. What are your dreams for this Advent season? What is your image of the realm of Almighty God? What are you doing to make those dreams become a reality? Today, many of the maladies of which Isaiah and John spoke have been conquered by modern medicine by science and technology. Medicine may not fully have con conquered blindness, deafness or many of the other diseases, but physically 
were certainly healthier than our ancestors. We still do not raise the dead, but that power is still reserved for Almighty God. But many lives are extended and made longer by scientific discoveries. Because of advances in transportation, we're no longer in danger of being stranded in the desert. And the technology of modern irrigation systems has made barren places lush and fruitful. As members of a parish community of this, the National Church of Scotland, as followers of Christ, all are called to work and pray to bring about a world that fulfills the ministry of Jesus Christ. What does this world look like? It is a world described by three words. Love, justice, and compassion. In the context of today's society, this is a big dream. But those who share this dream are in very good company. Throughout the ages there have been prophets and messengers who have held on to this dream and who have given their lives to bring hope. And justice and compassion to a world that rejects these values. From early Christianity there were disciples and apostles of Christ and the martyrs of the Reformation and the hero heroes of, of social reform. There are those who have struggled with equal rights and acceptance between male and female, between black and white. There have, there have been people in the church who have devoted their work and lives to proclaiming love and justice and compassion in the name of Jesus Christ. If we are being honest, really honest with ourselves, I think we must admit that we all need a bit of gentle redirecting as we find ourselves in the wilderness of contemporary society. Advent is a time to renew our dreams and to resolve to work to make those dreams become real. So I ask you, does this parish have a vision? Does this parish have a dream and a mission? A mission which not simply allows its members to exist in relative Christian comfort, but which also calls its members to work, to work together to bring the love and justice and compassion of Christ to this community and even to the world beyond it. What will that someone who comes looking, think when he or she looks at this di in this direction. Will they see a bunch of men and women working in harmony together and working to being an active and a valuable part of God's kingdom here on earth? Advent is the time for us to renew our commitment to this vision and to this mission. If we are to accept the challenge of being followers of Christ, we must be dreamers. Not daydreamers, but dreamers of dreams that we know we can fulfill. Dreamers, but we must be doers as well. Being a Christian means that we are vitally engaged in ministries that will bring the love and justice and compassion of Jesus Christ to the wilderness of this world. We must be prophets, and messengers, and ministers of good news. The church should never be someone, uh, the church should never be an organization which is minister-centered. The minister is only one person, but you are all ministers too. You belong to the priesthood of ministry. Our dreams are precious in good times and bad. Our vision for a better world, a world in which we experience God's justice and mercy, is what gives us hope. It gives us hope and hope for others. And it confirms our faith. 
Advent is the time that calls us to dream of the full coming of Christ. Because we know that Christ came once before. And we know that the God incarnate came into a world that was sitting in darkness. Sitting in darkness, a world lost in the wilderness. He came in the form of a vulnerable child. A child so poor that like many of today's children, he had no place even to lay his head. And there are so many such children like that today living in abject poverty. Let us be messengers and ministers of God's love. In all that we say and in all that we do, and let this be our Advent dream and hope, a really big hope for the church, so that it stands out and attracts others to come, to come and find out what being a Christian is all about. It's about sacrifice. It's about giving. It's about receiving. It's about being a part part of a part of an organization that seeks only the best for the whole world an organization that's girded with the love of God Amen Thank you, Ali. Let us pray. Thank you, mighty God, for the men and women like John the Baptist, whose integrity opens up the way for your mighty work in human lives. Thank you for their readiness to stand up and be counted, for their willingness to suffer and even to die for the truth that is in them. Thank you that such men and women are not a thing of the past, but still alive among us, 
giving you glory and their fellow men and women hope, reaffirming your great love. Help us to be like them. Give us the strength to stand by the truth that we know and so do justice to the living splendor of Jesus Christ our Lord. Great God, we come to your eternal integrity and pray that it might be matched by the integrity of your church in this place. We pray for ourselves and all Christians that we may have a clear vision and a firmness of purpose to stand by Jesus, whatever the consequences. We pray for all Christians who go about their work and whose names never reach the headlines, those whose personalities are not especially magnetic and who know very well that they will never set the heather on fire. Give them even so proper pride as brothers and sisters of the risen Christ our Lord. Confidence to live in the world as your children and a humble sense of their own greatness as citizens of your kingdom. We pray for all men, women and children, especially at this time, who long for good and yet who fear the worst. Feeling helpless against the current inexorable force of a deadly virus. We pray for those who are suffering economic hardship. We pray for our politicians and scientists who are trying to win this battle against Corona and the, in the doing trying to keep all of us safe and well. And yet we hear the ugly voices rise up accusing of a lack of fairness. Loving Father, restore your children's confidence in the, in the value and influence of individual men and women in their indi the individual freedom. Convince them that the integrity, love and commitment of one man or woman can have power for you. And let your truth be proclaimed as it was in John, in John beheaded and in Christ crucified. Help us, weak as we are, to go on with this sort of certainty, where people are, are broken by violence, wasted by poverty and crushed by injustice, weakened by illness or overwhelmed by grief, and help us to take with us the power of your, your power to heal and to transform. Help us to go and announce your coming again into every situation and to live in the confidence that you will be there for us, as you said, even to the end of time. But times may disillusion us. Events may shake us. People may seek to hurt us. But we know you will stand by us, and we shall see your glory and share your eternity with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now a hymn that I really hope will someday come to pass. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing our great Redeemer's praise. And this is sung for us by the New Irish Choir and Orchestra.
God loves you. Go from here in peace and in very great joy to love and to serve him. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and remain with each one of you now and wherever you go. Amen.